Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're taking a look at an in-scale locomotive. Don't do a whole lot of these, so I had to go to DeBob's in-scale man cave to do the review. But we're taking a look at the BNSF and CSX in-scale tier 4 Jivos from Scaletrains.com. The price on these is $204.99 for the sound version and $124.99 for the non-sound version. And then you can install your own ESU Loc Sound non-sound decoder or sound decoder if you want uh, on version. Let's see what you get in these locomotives from Scaletrains.com next. Alright, we're gonna unbox this. Got a little operator's manual here. So, three fold-out pages. There are the functions listed if you want to pause your video and take a look at that. And Nothing on the back really, a little graphics drawing on the front. Some foam and plastic that it is installed in here to protect the locomotive. Loco's coming out, we'll get out the foam inserts and take a closer look. Okay, so we have the BNSF and the CSX schemes out here. One of the pieces of feedback I got in a recent survey was that I mentioned too many of the parts going around the locomotive, so I'm not going to just blabber out parts, but I will go over the overall detail of the locomotives and show you the level of detail on these because I think it is very nicely done for in-scale. So for example, on the in-scale locomotives a lot of times you will see a very shallow depth on the molded in parts, molded in details, and you have some very highly detailed parts here and some nice depth to the molds and battery box doors and all of the compartment doors along the side. You've got separately applied grab irons and operating ditch lights and headlight that are LEDs. You've got a spring loaded coupler there. Really nice truck detail for an in-scale locomotive. Got BNSF scheme here as you can see is beautifully painted. I think an accurate paint job there. Nice deep black on the top. The tier 4 radiator grill looks nice. And you've got the exhaust which in this case has a tapered off exhaust. The locomotives have a couple different versions of the exhaust later on in production. As you can see that exhaust sticking up there. This whole housing was flush with earlier production. This is a later project, production Jivo with that tapered off exhaust area there. This is a better look, not only at my giant thumb, but at the close detail of the trucks and how well detailed the trucks and fuel tank are. So I think it's a nice job to be able to squeeze all that detail in such a small locomotive. You even see some nice underbody detail there. So you can see how well detailed this in-scale locomotive is. I don't think I'm exaggerating when I say that this is the most highly detailed in-scale locomotive I've seen to date. Bob is off camera. He's more of an in-scaler and he can tell me if uh, he agrees with that sentiment or not. I sure do. Yep, so Bob agrees. I wasn't holding a gun to his head or anything in the background. So um, it's pretty obvious to me that this in-scale model is groundbreaking in that aspect. A quick look at the CSX unit, same thing, great detail all around. You can see the road name and road number specific detail like the antenna array on the roof. So a difference between BNSF there and the PTC array on the BNSF and the dome antenna on the CSX even though I believe that is PTC compliant. CSX Logo looks good, all the printing looks nice, they've even got small warning labels. Everything looks good in terms of body coupled to the main chassis here. No major issues there from what I can see. You've got a sight glass on the fuel tank and lots of detail that I'm not going to be able to cover. You're just going to have to see for yourself. If you look at this locomotive from this aspect, zoomed in, you can see some nice detail on the front and really 
If you weren't aware of the fact that it was an N-scale locomotive, you might think it's an HO based on the detail level, but pretty good there. Nice detail, you've got silver tipped in on the MS MU hoses there, not the MS hoses. But overall, that's about it for detail. Let's get into operation. All right, so Bob's gonna fire up the locomotive by hitting F8. All right, we're going to go through some functions here, just some from the operator's manual to get an idea of what the locomotive does, starting with F1, the bell. All right, F2, the horn. Now, as you can see in this ESU, the bell and the horn both work when you hit F2. F3 is coupler, F4 is dynamic brake when you're moving. Uh, before we move you can notice that the locomotive from coupler to coupler is about 6 inches long. There you hear the dynamic brake whine. F5 is DPU mode lighting which allows for that rear light to light up. If it's in a DPU mode or the front light, you're going forward or backwards, depending. So F6 is ditch lights, which we'll show the lighting later. F7, F7 is not in use. F8 does sound on and off. F9 is drive hold, where you can actually rev up the locomotive and pretend like the locomotive is under load with a large consist and then release the drive hold and it will actually move along. Other functions like F13, air driver, F16, spitter shut down, F17, brake set and release, F18, sanding valve, F19, short air let off, and F20, compressor, we won't cover, but they are part of this decoder from ESU that's installed. Now speaking of installing decoders, here we have the ESU Loke Pilot DCC decoder. This is specifically for the tier 4 GEVO here and you can plug this in item number 54686. The non-sound, non-DCC version that I showed at the beginning of this video, the CSX version, is actually DC and you can plug this in and it will turn to DCC with a simple removal of the chassis and the installation of this decoder without any further issues. Now we're going to check slow speed control on the locomotive. So we'll move this starting at one speed step. And two. Three. Four, five, six, seven, and eight. And I'll stop there. We're going to go in reverse now. We are super zoomed in on this thing. So bear with a little bit of jittery camera work as everything is magnified when it's zoomed in. We're going one in reverse here. Stick with one for a little while longer. See how smooth it is. Very smooth at one. Two. Three. Four. Five, six, seven, and eight. So very smooth for an in-scale locomotive. 
a lot of times because of the small spaces you have to cram in scale components in, you get a more jerky drive depending on the manufacturer, not the case here. All right, the lights have been dimmed so you can see the nice prototypical lighting from the Tier 4 Jivo. You've got backlit number boards, headlight, and ditch lights that are all LED, so very nicely done. And I think it's a very prototypical look. It's bright enough. About to weigh this now. You got four ounces. That's 112 grams. So, pretty beefy locomotive. Bob was curious what the non sound one weighs. 109 grams and 3.8 ounces, so it just sheds 0.2 ounces. Be sure to check out Bob's review. I'll put the link down below. He does go through all the functions and does a great job at his review as well, and he had it out uh, to give people some informed buying decisions a little earlier. So if you don't feel like you have enough perspective, you can go there. I'm gonna leave you with a run-by here on Bob's layout. We'll see you next time right here on my channel. Take care.